Hello, my name is Jenna Freund, and I'm from Rowan University. Uh, this summer, I did a program at Hunter University where I studied act. Oh yes, Hunter College, where I studied actomycin inter interactions in swan cells during cell development and myelination. Uh, so myelin is an important cell structure that insulates neural axons and allows for saltatory conduction down the axon during an action potential. You can think of it as like the rubber coating on a copper wire in simple terms. Um, in the absence of myelin, the electrical signals sent down the axon are impaired. So many diseases and disorders result in improper myelination. So understanding myelination is really important for understanding what, ha what happens when, it, when myelination goes wrong and how we may remedy that to fix myelination. Um, there are two different types of cells that myelinate in our bodies. There's oligodendrocytes, which are found in the central nervous system and the spinal cord, and there are uh, Schwann cells, which are found in the peripheral nervous system. Uh, Schwann cells myelinate one axon per cell, and they extend tendrils called processes that wrap around the axon and perform myelination. There is a peripheral neuropathy called charcot marie tooth 2B that causes atrophy of peripheral musculature and sensory defects. Um, so since it's a peripheral, uh, peripheral uh, a neuropathy, we want to look at Schwann cells and the effect that a mutation which in RAB7 which causes charcot marie tooth 2B has on Schwann cells themselves and their effect on, of course, myelination. So. Uh, RAB7 is a small protein found on the, uh, the membrane of late endosomes. Uh, it regulates protein trafficking and anything that's inside a RAB7 vesicle is usually headed to the lysosome for later degradation. Uh, it's found also, RAB7, to interact with non-muscle myosin 2 and other cell types. Now, myosin 2 in Schwann cells mediates cell adhesion, so adhesion to axons, cyt cytoskeletal reorganization and regulation, so uh, the extension of the processes and cell maturation, and then Schwann cell polarization, so like the, uh, the ability for the Schwann cell to properly elongate along the axon. Uh, so when myosin 2 is non-specifically inhibited using blebistatin, we find that the Schwann cell fails to make a one-to-one -one ratio with the axon, as in, you can see here, this is a Schwann cell treated with blebistatin. Um, the little stars represent axons, and the Schwann cell is just kind of plopped on top, not really making much contact with one axon. Um, it also failed to properly polarize and elongate along an axon, and the myelinated segments became shorter depending on the, uh, the increased dosage. Uh, so this is a proper myelinating axon, you, myelinating Schwann cell. You can see that the axon is right in the middle. The Schwann cell is properly uh, encircled around it, and uh, you can see the difference between the blebistatin treated, which inhibits myosin non-specifically, and the normal wild-type Schwann cell. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you. So, non-muscle myosin 2 is also activated by two different kinases called MLCK and ROC. So they elongate the, the inactive phase into the active phase and cause non-muscle myosin 2 to become active. So when we inhibit one of those activators, MLCK, we find that there's a large accumulation of uh, RABs have been positive vesicles in the perinuclear region. We can see that these vesicles are enlarged. This is standing for RAB7. We can see that that indicates a problem in protein trafficking. So we posit that there is a, my there's a, a regulatory interaction between myosin and RAB7. Uh, we can find this through colocalization analysis of RAB7 and myosin in Schwann cells treated with myosin inhibitors. Uh, so we can see if the inhibition of myosin affects its colocalization with RAB7. And we can do the opposite by transfecting an inactive version of RAB, uh, dominant negative, into RAB7, of RAB7 into Schwann cells and seeing if the inhibition of RAB7 affects its colocalization with myosin. So what transfection is, it's that's when you take a plasmid vector with your gene of interest and you kind of just stick it into your cell through some, some processes and then you you upregulate the protein of interest. So we did that with RAB7 for our experiment. And colocalization is just um, really the, the overlap of two regions of interest. So if you're staining for two different proteins, 
um, and they come up as yellow, per se, if you have a red and a, and a green protein, that region of interest is now co-localized. So, in our first experiment, we took Schwann cells only, treated them with uh, myosin inhibitors, blebostatin, which inhibits myosin non-specifically, and ML7, which inhibits uh, which inhibits MLCK, and we found that when we added cyclic AMP, which induces myelination programming in Schwann cells, that we found a decrease in the inhibited, uh, in, in the inhi Schwann cells, in, in the co-localization of, of RAV7 and myosin in the Schwann cells that were treated with the inhibitors. Uh, we also did cold cultures with dorsal root ganglia, which are interneurons found in the, the spinal cord and, in, uh, and peripheral nervous system. So we took these E16 rats, we uh, did a microdissection, removed spinal cords and DRGs, and we plated the DRGs and later uh, treated them with Schwann cells, which were already transfected with dominant, negative, and wild type RAB7. So dominant negative RAB7 is inactive, it's not working, whereas wild type RAB7 is what you would see in, in a, normal, a normal type RAB7. Uh, so we find that after four days in cold culture that the dominant negative RAB7 treated Schwann cells uh, are ex displaying a decrease in co-localization with phospho-MLC. Uh, this means that this, I mean, this supports our hypothesis that, that they have a regulatory relationship, uh, RAB7 and, and non-muscle myosin too. So, future directions, we want to look at the downstream effects of RAB7 non-functionality, so the disruption of protein trafficking, specifically signal proteins, um, because that's usually what we find in a RAB7 uh, endosome, which would, would also may have large effects on myelination because uh, one, one protein we looked at specifically was neuregulin, as you can see here. It's inside a RAB7 vesicle, and if, you, if you're not, if you, there's improper RAB7 protein trafficking, you may find that, that the signal uh, is not stopped in time, so it prolongs the signal and may disrupt proper myelination. And then another thing we want to do is verify our uh, co-localization through, through a biochemical analysis called acute co-immunoprecipitation to pull down a RAB7 and myosin complex. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my PI, Carmen Melendez-Vasquez, and Dr. Christopher Ironman for helping me understand my project. Like, and I'd also like to thank the Hunter, Hunter program <laughs> and the two grants that funded us. <laughs>